Hello everyone, welcome to the channel, I'm Chef Joe, and if you're new, this is our first review, and there will be plenty more to come, so please hit that subscribe button so you don't miss anything. Let's get right into it. Redfall has seen some pretty bad reviews since the release of the game, and to be honest, this video won't be much different. I started playing with my cousin, who I have been gaming with for over 25 years, and make a pretty good team. Combined with our vast video game knowledge and passion for gaming, we decided to give Redfall a try. Right out of the gate, this is a $70 game, which is probably the biggest scam game of 2023, and even if you were a millionaire, you would want a refund. However, with the Xbox Game Pass for PC, we were able to play it for only $10, which for a $10 game, and given the current state of the market, we were able to power through it. Right away, I felt the movement to be a bit awkward and the game gunplay rather clunky. Out of the four characters to choose from, I decided to pick Lena, a telekinetic psychic warrior who uses her umbrella to absorb bullets and afterwards lets out an AoE ability. That combined with the jump pad for mobility. However, the ultimate reason I chose her was simply for the ultimate vampire ex-boyfriend. And my cousin played Jacob, who specialized in stealth and sniping. He could summon a raven that caused horrendous red outline around targets, making their models very grainy and pixelated. His ultimate ability was aimbot snipe. The AI in this game is a joke, and the pathing is horrible for vampires. And the cultists with guns make stormtroopers look like Shroud. Happy May the 4th, everyone. Speaking of shrouds, there are few special vampires and I'd have to say the most challenging slash fun fights were against the rooks. A vampire that is spawned after a red meter fills up uh -oh. on your screen that indicates the, the vampire coming. gods are watching you. After the meter fills up, red lightning starts striking the ground dealing damage if you are hit. After a period of time, the rook spawns and chases you down. Even on the hardest difficulty, we were able to make quick work of these strongest enemies by utilizing the stake launcher and the black lights scattered throughout the map. This game would best be described as Far Cry with Vampires, minus 90% of the content. The missions became repeatable and it felt like we were running around doing the same things over and over. Main mission, find a hideout, side quest which some of the side quests didn't even work properly. Uh, there was one side quest where we were supposed to defend an area, but there. no enemies would even spawn. Kill a mini boss three times. Once you have the three skulls of the underboss, bring it to the door. Combined with the vampire god's respective remnant, you enter into a psychic realm and fight the hollow man. You got him! Got him! Stake! Stake him! I'm staking him! I'm watching! Get him! Yes! I, I, on my screen, I missed Bloody Tom. Miss Whispers. Oh! Uh oh, it was boss. I could never die. Mistake her with her own stake. Oh. Then finally, the Black Sun. The final boss was probably the worst. It didn't even feel like a boss fight. The rest of the fights were mediocre. Some we killed on the first try. Others took once or twice. Something definitely not to be expected on the hardest difficulty, Midnight. Except, when you beat the game, you unlock another difficulty, Eclipse. But good luck getting anybody to play through this game again. The AI does get a little smarter and stronger when you enter the next section of the map. However, by that point, everything felt like a task, and we were just trying to finish the game, which took me about 15 hours. However, I did do some side quests, so I wasn't just going for the main story. You could probably do it a lot faster than that. 
the storm. There are some really cool places. The environment, the atmosphere, it just felt good. It felt creepy. What initially drew me in was the overall setting and environment of the game. It was really nice and visually appealing. The talent trees and the guns. Loot. Different added perks. That didn't but in the end, it all became muddled together in a game that ultimately just made me want to play V-Rising even more. My final score of this game is a 5. The overall gameplay of this game, I would probably also give a 5. There is a story. Some mediocre cutscenes, they're all still motion, not exactly like cinematics. But the story was okay, so I would give it a 5. The graphics, I would also give a 5. Mainly because of the atmosphere and the environment. The fun I had on a scale of 1 to 10, I would probably give it a 4. It started out kind of enjoyable, but towards the end, I was just ready to be done. I give the difficulty a 3. This game is pretty easy. The optimization of the game was pretty bad. I would give it a 4. There was a lot of visual bugs, this was the light. disconnecting, long That's loading times, and ultimately not a very good experience. The sound, I would give a 5. It sounded okay. <sighs> and the replayability of this game, I would give like, a 3. Is this a wall right I don't here? think there would be anybody <laughs> who would want to play like, this yeah, game a again. Lot more than a fucking even wall. with a full Wait. squad of 4 people. Well, thank you guys for watching. Please remember to subscribe Let's and check out more of my shit. content. And check Don't out my Twitch on live stream <laughs> on Chef Joe 925 I'll see you guys later. There's no Peace. wall here. What the fuck? It's pitch black in here. That's it. Imagine paying 70 for that. <laughs>